Hello and welcome to the second part of Sports Talk right here on Same Side Radio. I'm Mark Phillip and I'm joined this week by Quest Media Network's Katie Caffrell. Katie, how are you doing? I'm good, thanks Mark. How are you? Yeah, not too bad, thanks. Well, there's plenty to discuss this week, but as usual, we'll start the show by taking a look at the Premier League fixtures as Manchester United host Liverpool on Sunday and Manchester City travel to Brighton on Saturday. I was joined earlier today by Betfred's Peter Spencer to preview the fixtures and provide the latest odds in a number of markets. Peter, early this week it was Champions League action and a lot of drama. So on Tuesday night, City made the trip to Club Bruges and cruised to a 5 1 victory. And then 24 hours later, at Old Trafford, ended Manchester United 3, Atalanta 2. And to be honest with you, that result took papering over the cracks. Well, a lot of people are saying that. Um, it could be argued that it might mean that United kick on now um, and go and beat Liverpool, for instance. But um, I'm inclined to think that um, it. Could he, it's not, it was either Juventus debate, it wasn't uh, Atletico Madrid or, or even Real Madrid, it was an average team from Italy that yeah. he beat. Um, and they shouldn't really be chasing a game like that, yeah. um, uh, even though they did win 3 2. But what sort of United are going to turn out <laughs> at Old Trafford on Sunday? That's the biggest issue, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, um, you're looking at that game. In my opinion, I think Liverpool have got a cruise to victory in that one. Well, stranger things can happen in a one-off game like that. And United have got the um, uh, goal-scoring pedigree roared on by a very loyal crowd, I thought, because there was booze at half-time mm. when they were losing 2-0 um, on Wednesday. But then, why they didn't play like that in the second, in the first half, got yeah. me. Um, I mean, the odds now with that Fred for winning the Champions League, United have been caught quite dramatically on the back of that because they did show a lot of courage. Um, and I don't think any team would relish coming to Old Trafford in the Champions League, yep. uh, however big they are. So City are now the outright favourites for the Champions League. They're seven to two after that hugely morale boosting five one victory. Um, that was better than we expected. The seven to two now with Betfred to win the Champions League. Uh, Bayern Munich are second favourites four to one. PSG five to one, Liverpool seven to one. They had a great win, Atletico again, and yeah. uh, Salah did dream, uh, brilliantly with another goal. Uh, Chelsea eight to one, United now fourteen to one for the Champions League. And Betfred have Madrid now in uh, Real Madrid in now uh, slightly at twenty to one. Barcelona drifting out mm. fifty to one for the Champions League. Mm. You mentioned Barcelona. You know they're at the new Camp the other night, and it was it was barely full. I mean it was half empty, wasn't it? Sad yeah. scenes because. You go back a few years ago and it was always booming there, wasn't it? Yeah, and and as I've said before, you, you do realise now why Barcelona and Real Madrid and some of the Italian giants were desperate to get that uh, European Super League going yeah. because they need the Premier League, yeah. effectively. And the Premier League, thanks to the fans, are not having it. Yeah, they're certainly not. So let's just take a look back at uh, United's 3 2 win. It is papering over the cracks, that's my opinion. But what do you think Ollie said at half time? I mean, do you really think he kicks off with his players? I mean, it was completely different to the first half. Well, you'd imagine he would kick off. I mean, <laughs> but I think the players themselves would uh, take it on board as well. And they're probably kicking off with, against the colleagues. I mean, if you say oh, Fernandez, he has enough to say to referees. He wants to concentrate yeah. on having something to say to his colleagues. Um, but he did a, a great pass. Um, for that first goal yeah. um, when they were battling back that was supreme um, but you've you, you got to think it's all down to Solskjaer because he's assembled that group of players yeah. and he can't get those players in the same lineup. so that's why Pogba was dropped for instance um, and he, he didn't and he's got Sancho to accommodate as well. Yeah. These are, and then uh, Cavani. When Cavani came on it showed more intelligence up front yeah. and Ronaldo went wider but Ronaldo is the key. Yeah, if he, he carries on scoring key goals like he did on Wednesday night, United could go higher and higher um, and even challenge for maybe the title. Um, but at the moment, they are off the pace. They, yeah. they are behind City, Liverpool and Chelsea. And it isn't good enough for Manchester United to be, be behind those teams when you think of the money yeah. that they're shelling out. Well, they're not just behind... They're well behind. So we are looking at that fixture on Sunday. It's Manchester United hosting Liverpool. Peter, what are the odds looking like for this one? Right, well, United are 11 to 5 with that Fred to get three points. Liverpool, not surprisingly, favourite 6 to 5. Um, Salah to score first is 10 to 3. I think that's a good price. Uh, Ronaldo, 7 to 2 to score first. Remember, he'd probably be taking the penalties. 
Um, and then Mane, 9-2 to two to score first. Bruno, 13-2 to two to score first. I think he's due a few more goals. He's not quite playing as well as he did last year. Mm. Um, but it's a different setup, and he has got he is capable of turning it on again. Um, for the Premier League top goal scorer, Salah's leading the way big time now. He's 2-1 to one with seven goals so far to be the league top scorer. Um, Betfred have Lukaku, second favourites at 7-2. Um, and Ronaldo, only three goals so far in the league, five to one. Vardy, seven goals so far in the league, he's ten to one. Excellent stuff. Well, you just mentioned Lukaku then. Uh, he picked up a ankle injury, I think, uh, earlier this week in the Champions League. So I'm not sure if he'll be playing this weekend. Uh, but yeah, like you said, then he's uh, what is he now? Odd wise for leading goal scorer. Right. Well, his second favourite at seven to two. He was favourite at the beginning of the season when mm. he first signed. Well, it'll certainly be a miss if he's not going to play for Chelsea due to ankle injury. But we'll take a look now at Manchester City's Premier League fixture this weekend because they made a long trip to Brighton and Hove Albion. Peter, what are you looking like for this? Well, that's an interesting one. And if it wasn't for the United-Liverpool game overshadowing affairs, this would be the best uh, game um, on paper um, this weekend in this mm. round of fixtures. Uh, could Brighton are riding high yeah, at the are. fourth? But City more than capable of knocking him off that perch. Um, and Brighton are five to two. Liverpool, uh, sorry, City, uh, two to five odds on favourites to get all three points. Now the difficulty when we sort the odds out for City is getting the first goal scorer because it's all spread around. There, there is. isn't yeah. a guaranteed um, likely scorer. It's much more uh, spread amongst those midfielders converting as like a false number nine. But we, Foden's been doing that job of late um, and he did it remarkably well in Europe this week. But Foden, Jesu, Mares, and Sterling are all 4 to 1 to score first. Mm. Um, next up is De Bruyne, 9 to 2, and Grealish, 5 to 1. Well, they have it. Raheem Sterling, 4 to 1 to score first. But Peter, is he on his way out? Well, there's a lot of questions about that. Um, if you ask me hand on heart, I'll say yes, because I don't think he quite fits in with the uh, way of thinking of the manager. Um, he clearly has a, an issue when he's through on goal. Um, he misses a lot, but then he gets in great opportunities to, to, do, to score, so he's yeah. getting in the right positions. But since he's come from Liverpool, he hasn't really built on that. He still suffers in front of goal when he's kind of got too much time. When it's an instinct, mm. well, bang it straight in. Yeah. He's got supreme pace. But he's a little one-footed for me. Um, Grealish, Mares, Foden are probably ahead of him now. Yeah. Um, and he might be able to do it for England uh, with that link-up play with uh, Harry Kane, yeah. particularly important for the national team. But for City, I think he's more of a squad player now. And he's an expensive squad player. <laughs> and he could be... But it's time for him to make a move, not just for City's sake, but for his own sake, yeah. for his own career. I was going to say, sometimes a fresh challenge can reignite that spark in a player. Where would you see him play, or who would you see him playing for? What kind of club would he suit? I think he'd probably suit uh, a team like Barcelona, um, or even Real Madrid. Mm. But it's, I doubt he's going to go to Real Madrid. Barcelona would be the favourite, because um, they need to refresh their team. Yeah. And he is the sort of player who could... Um, uh, do well abroad with that electric pace. He's probably the fastest player in the Premier League today. Mm, yeah, he is. He's a great player. It would be a shame to see him leave the Etihad Stadium, but who knows where he's going to end up. Well, it's been great speaking to you once again, Peter. And if you do fancy a punt on any of the fixtures this weekend, Betfred stores are now open, but you can also bet online and via their app. Well, our thanks as usual go to Betfred for their ongoing support and sponsorship. So, the big news this week came at Curzon Ashton, as manager Steve Cunningham was sacked despite a great start to the season. Cunningham was relieved of his duties after it emerged that he'd been consulting with another club about a potential job, combined with a serious breach of club discipline. The Nash were eliminated from the FA Cup last weekend after falling to a 4-0 defeat to Chesterfield and face a long trip to third place Spennymoor Town on Saturday. So, Katie, the big news this week, Cunningham's been sacked 
Was it fair? I mean, it's a big conversation to be had here, isn't it? Because he'd have such a great start to the season this year. And he wasn't on contract at Curzon. So realistically, maybe him looking at other clubs wasn't such a big deal. But I'm guessing if the club aren't happy with that, then that's their decision. I mean, in any other profession, if you're not contracted, surely you can go elsewhere or at least go into discussion with other employers. Yeah, I mean, you'd think so. I mean, most of the jobs, like I say, then you'd be able to look at other places and have conversations and things. But obviously, that wasn't the case at Curzon. They're not happy with the way he's reacted to things. So they have just got rid of him for this season. Do you think they should have kept him? I mean, he'd created some stability at the club, overachieving this season. Obviously, they got beat last week in the FA Cup, but to a far superior side. But, you know, from their FA Cup run, I think they made over 10 grand good for the coffers. I think it'll be a big loss for them, because obviously he's been fantastic at Curzon. I think it'll be great wherever he goes, but I do think it'll be a big loss for Curzon to have lost him this season. He started off fantastically, and he was set to continue that until he was yeah. laid off. So, I mean, it is a big loss for them, really. I mean, it's disrupt- disrupted the momentum. Uh, who are they going to bring in? I mean... Surely at this point in the season, they've just got on a good run. You don't want to be bringing anyone else in. No, I think it'd be hard for them to find someone to especially replace his shoes as well after having such a fantastic start. I mean, it will be difficult for them, especially as they're already started the season now. It's not the beginning, so it will be difficult for them to find someone to replace that. Yep, certainly will. Well, moving across the borough, Staleybridge Celtic Academy has extended its partnerships with both main sponsor Smurfit Kappa and education partner Tameside College for a further three years. Both partnerships began in 2016 and, due to their success, an extension until 2024 has been agreed. I spoke to Ian Milligan, Academy Chair, Lynn Case, General Manager at Smurfit Kappa and Jackie Moores, CEO and Principal at Tameside College. We think the, the structure and support that comes with a further education college is, is the right environment for our Academy students and there's nothing better than being with your local uh, further Education College, yeah. Tameside College and Jackie, uh, the, the head there has been superb through this last five years so we're really pleased to be continuing that partnership. Mm. How important is it to have these local links? You've got the Tameside College, you've got Smurfit Kappa, a really big local business. How important is it to have that local aspect to it? I think it's very important. Um, it, it gives a clearer identity to what the club and the academy is about and you know, there's a lot of these academies around. Um, so I think it's one of the, the competitive differences um, that we have and it gives the, it gives the lads, again, a, re- a real strong identity. And I think that's reflected by, you know, if you, if you look at the, on the football side, the coaching staff, Simon Howarth, yeah. uh, Phil Jackson, our keeper coach, and Dave Pover, the physio, they're all first team guys. So yeah. they're, they're getting a first team experience um, and you can only do that uh, if if it's your local club. I'm not. I'm sure Pep goes and has a look <laughs> at the academy at City, uh, but I don't think they're being coached by Pep day in day yeah. out. Whereas our lads are coached by Simon and his team. Yeah. And it's not just uh, first team personnel. Simon's played as high as the Championship, the likes of Wigan, for Cardiff, big clubs. You know that must be a real attraction for these youngsters. Yeah, they they sort of uh, they, it gives a huge credibility uh, to it, and and he's he's obviously been there, seen there, done it. Uh, I think also what he brings is is a real level headedness to it as well, though. And he knows better than anyone that most lads that go into football don't make it. Yeah. And from our point of view, um, we we go into this while we want to see these lads develop into Staley Bridge and beyond footballers. We work on the basis they're not. And actually, the most important thing for us is they come out with a good education, good qualifications, um, and they're getting a, a good start in life. Mm. And as far as Smurfit Kappa are concerned, I think while they appreciate the football aspect, I think the likes of Lynn and Gary, their, their first priority and the reason they get into this or got into this was they liked the idea of these young lads getting a further education, probably yeah. getting a break. Uh, and also understand that the football brings a motivation to help them work harder yeah. um, and, and make the most of that education opportunity. Yeah, well Jackie was saying it's very disciplined at the college, it's not just a case of them turning up, not doing the work and then going playing football. That will make them real rounded blokes, won't it? It will, and, and when I talk with the lads, um, and, and also occasionally when I'm having a, having a grump with them, <laughs> it's very much about standards, it's about you know, being there, it's about being there on time, it's about the right level of respect for mm. your teammates, for staff, for the opposition. And that's all about trying to build them into, you know, good good 
people for the outside world and getting them ready for the outside world. Yep, and we've just come out of COVID. A lot of clubs up and down the country are struggling, as are a lot of businesses. So for you to get the support from Tameside Council, from Smurfit Kappa, in these financially difficult times, just shows uh, what they must think of the club. Yeah, I mean, Smurfit Kappa have been on board five years. Initially, they came in for two years, then they extended for three years, and then they've extended another three years. I, I don't know anyone, you know, whether it's first team or any level where... Um, someone's had eight years of continuous support like that yeah so the financial support is is terrific and you know in some of the tougher years it covers one or two gaps in better years it means we can do more for the lads than we might be able to do but I think on top of that you know for, for the staff for the whole club it just it feels like you've got someone in your corner backing you yeah and actually that goes a long way mm. as, as well and I think you know during this last year you know, business has been tough for everyone. Business has been tough for them. Um, so it, it's it's extra special to feel that we've we've got that support from Smith at Kappa Staley Bridge, uh, and we couldn't be more appreciative. And just finally, I've asked both Jackie and Lynn the same question. The kits are looking fantastic, aren't they? They are, yeah. And uh, and I think again, it's one of those things where um, it's great for the academy lads to feel part of the whole club yeah. so to see them wearing the first team kit and wearing these special kits from 100 years ago is amazing they got to wear it the first time last wednesday uh, we won 5-1 i don't know if that's a coincidence but you could definitely see a spring in the step just yeah. from from the fact that we were wearing this really really good gear i'm the general manager of the Staley bridge site and i'm very proud i've been there now for 12 years so uh, quite quite long in years for uh, somebody in my position, so I'm uh, very, very fortunate, yeah, I've been very happy here. Brilliant stuff, and I know you've got close ties with Staley Bridge Celtic. You've just renewed your sponsorship of the academy for a further three years. Can you tell us a bit about the reasons behind that? Absolutely, yes, yes. Well, again, we're very proud to be involved with the club. Um, my son's very, very much into football. We are as a family. I wanted to do something to help local, local people, and in particular um, the academy, the, the youngsters coming up. I was very, very keen to see that it was linked to the college as well, which is something that was very close to my heart to make sure people had um, an education as well as enjoyed the sport and hope, hopefully going on to be professionals. Also, all these sort of things tick the boxes for us at yeah. Daily Bridge. So to be able to do something locally and help help youngsters is, is what we were about. I was talking to Jackie before of Tameside College and she was talking to me about the importance of that balance between playing football but getting an education at the same time. Was that, the big, was that a big driving force behind your renewal? Is that one of the biggest things, would you say? That is the biggest thing, right. yes, yes, yeah, very much so. I mean, we get a lot of people coming into our plant, um, youngsters coming in. We've had a big influx this year. But it's great to think that you know, these guys are doing the football doing something that passionate about that they love yeah but equally so they know that they need this this backdrop this foundation of, of education yeah so, so it's a hand in hand partnership yeah absolutely I was gonna say in terms of the company what does your company do like in specifics uh, well we're the biggest uh, manufacturer of paper board packaging um, so we make paper right from the source and we turn that into boxes so just about every every box you pick up um, and anything you buy is, is probably been made by us um, with the world's largest so right. a lot of boxes going around a lot of paper but we're fully green so everything's totally recyclable and it goes back to source and it starts its life again Excellent stuff. Now you've seen the shirts, they look fantastic. Oh, what have you made of them? I think they're absolutely fantastic. I love the green one. Yeah. I like the retro collar in particular. I think they're absolutely fantastic. I can't wait to get a frame one that we can put in reception for everybody to see. I'm the principal at Tameside College and Clarendon Sixth Form College, which are the two um, big colleges in the centre of Ashton in Tameside. And you've been involved with Staley Bridge Celtics Academy for quite a while now. You've just extended your sponsorship for or your partnership for another three years, is that yes, right? Yeah, we're delighted to be able to announce the extension to the partnership. And we've worked with Staley Bridge Celtic since I was the principal, or since I became the principal at Tameside College. So we're delighted. So we've brought them back to work with a local FE college. And what are the positives of being involved with a club like Staley Bridge? I think because of the proximity 
between the college and the club, it means we can work together much more closely. Um, I think the academy programme for um, students at Staley Celtic means that we can get really talented young footballers mm. and alongside a study programme at the college really prepare them for the next step, either in football or into university. Yeah, it's really important to get that balance between playing football and an education because a lot of the players, they won't go on to forge a, a semi-professional or professional career. So how important is that balance? Absolutely, it's really important and that's, I think, one of the big strengths of working with the club so whether that's Ian or the, the manager at the club and we work together to make sure that they don't play if they don't submit the work so between us it's almost like a, a tripartite uh, arrangement whereby they've got to do the work yeah. and, and that's really important because you know some of these um, young men on this course go on to some really great degree courses and and I hope they will make semi-pro or pro careers out of this yeah. but if they don't they've definitely got a really good background to fall back on. And I was speaking to Head of Academy Simon Howarth last week and he was saying basically he wants to turn them into real men. It's not just about the football or the red education but turning them to you know, a decent members of society. Is that something you agree with? Absolutely and I think you know, at the college what we're trying to do is create rounded adults. It's not just an exam factory, it's not just a football factory here. It is very much about making sure young people can turn into those adults who will be working in industry and working alongside the rest of us as adults in the UK. So what of the lads who are part of Daily Bridge, what have they made of it? Are they really positive about it uh, inside college? Yeah, absolutely. And I think they enjoy coming to college as well. So they get the college experience uh, whereby they're meeting other people from other curriculum areas. Um, you know, and it's, it's a male programme, this. Mm. And so they get to meet other girls in college as well and they'll get to do other enrichment activities um, but they love it and they walk around in the Staley Bridge Celtic track suits and they look great in them you know they yeah. look really professional they get the professional football set up here alongside a college experience when they come into college for the study program you were talking about the kit then we've seen the shirts pretty smart aren't they I love the shirts and apparently it's a hundred year anniversary this year of the club entering into the football league um, and Ian was showing me how all the names of the squad a hundred years ago were on that on those uh, kits. And actually, I love, I really love the green retro kit. That's yeah. my favourite. Yeah. Well, our thanks to Ian, Lynn, and Jackie for providing their thoughts on the renewal at Staley Bridge Celtic Academy. Well, in school sports news, Old Winnians Rugby Club hosted the primary school tag rugby finals on Tuesday. The event, which was organised and coordinated by the Tameside School Sports Partnership, saw 200 pupils battle it out to become the best in the borough. Russell Scott Primary School in Denton took first spot, while Pinfold Primary School and Our Lady of Mount Carmel came second and third respectively. I spoke to Emma Toon, Tameside SSP Games organiser and Rob Taylor, Aldwinian's under-11s coach, to get their thoughts on a number of topics. So we're over at Aldwinian's, it's the Tameside um, Tag Rugby Finals for the primary schools and we're all really excited. It's a big competition this every year, uh, Aldwinians are hosting it, how helpful have they been to accommodate you? They've been amazing, it's the biggest competition we have with the many teams that are entering in the schools, so yeah, to have Aldwinians helping us like this, we've also had um, Duckyfield Rugby Club and Ashton Rugby Club helping us out as well, so to have volunteers from the clubs who are so professional, um, and it's, it's absolutely brilliant, I mean looking at this now, they're um, professional, they're respectful, the children have a different opinion of them as well that you know they go into a game sometimes it can be a little bit of argumentative but i think tonight we've been shown massive respect so schools have been absolutely brilliant yeah and tag rugby is a great way of getting into the proper game uh, because what age range is this tonight is it about 10 and 11 this is year five and six um which is year uh, 10 and 11 so yeah we've got some nine tens elevens the team is actually 12 children um eight in a team two girls and it just encourages lots of movement. If you have a look at all the games, they're constantly, they're constantly running. So it's excellent for us. They're, they're identifying space. They're trying to use the skills they've been learning in school recently to put them into a competition and play under pressure. And hopefully tonight we'll have some uh, happy children going away with medals and trophies. Yeah, definitely. And what uh, other competitions have you got coming up in the next few weeks? We, we've kind of gone with the option of making sure that they're all outdoors at the minute. So we've got the Quick Sticks Hockey which is similar age group. Tomorrow and Thursday we've got rugby again with year three and four, year five, six. So trying to give different options. And the quick six hockey, uh, we're looking at making sure that all children in a class can take part and not just the top kids. So um, 
we've kind of gone with festival ideas so it'll just be come and see if you can score a goal come and you know we're not really cared about how many you score yeah. just let's have a go at playing that sport fantastic it's been absolutely brilliant um I mean, a lot of these kids probably haven't really been exposed to rugby before the last few months. Covid's not helped because some of the year sixes haven't played uh, rugby at all um, throughout the whole of sort of 20 and 21. So to have them playing uh, this afternoon down here at the club is absolutely fantastic. Over 200 kids from across Tameside is, it, you know, it's massive news, great news. Yeah, and you're an under-11s coach at Aldwinians. Uh, how's that going so far this season? Fantastically, yeah. We've got a great bunch of boys and girls. Uh, Average about 20, 22 kids, um, and it's growing. We're, you know, we're here every Friday night, six till seven, as are uh, most of the junior teams and minis teams. Um, we've kept a core group who've been here probably since they're about seven years old. And as we move through to under 11s, then yeah, we've got ever expanding numbers. So the more the merrier for me. I was going to say it must be great to see a clear pathway to uh, the second and first team here at Ardenshaw Park. Absolutely, yeah, and we've got some first 15ers that have started in the mini and junior section. So long may that continue. Well, that was Emma Toon and Rob Taylor talking about the tag rugby finals on Tuesday. So Katie, it was great to see 200 pupils from across the borough taking part in tag rugby. I mean, it was cold on the night, it was wet, but it's what kids love, don't they? Yeah, I mean, after having so long away from the sport with COVID, I think it's fantastic. And rugby is not something that they might do at school, so we'll do that outside of school with the friends that they've got at school is a lovely thing for them to all be able to do there. Yeah, it's good to have a variety of options, isn't it? I mean, what were you doing when you were at school? What was the main sport there? Mine was always rugby union. They placed a lot of focus on that on the Yeah, we did like handball and things, I believe, and like badminton, but we didn't do much rugby. So I think it'd be nice to have that wide range of sport for the kids to find what they're good at as well, because most won't even know they're good at that until they have a go. Yeah, definitely. Well, tag rugby, really intense sport, and it's you obviously can't have that physical contact at that age, can you? But to get them just moving, like Emma said then, they're constantly on the move. There's no time for stopping still. So just to increase fitness levels and, you know, a lot of kids carrying a bit of weight, weight these days. So a sport like that is good for them. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you are completely on the go, aren't you? And I think it is good to learn the principles of rugby. And then if they get older and want to go further into that, they can do knowing the basics that they've done since childhood. Mm, yeah, definitely. Well, we'll move back into football news now. And in the MPL Premier Division last weekend, Staley Bridge Celtic were beaten on home soil as Bamber Bridge ran out 2-1 winners at Bowerfold. Simon Howard side a 10th in the table and make the trips to 17th place Mickleover on Saturday. Elsewhere, Ashton United came from behind and picked up a massive three points with a 2-1 victory over Nantwich Town at Hurst Cross. The Robins are third from bottom and face a tough trip to third place Bamber Bridge on Saturday. Hyde United tasted their fourth consecutive defeat with a 2-0 loss at Basford United. The result leaves the Tigers fourth from bottom. Jim Gannon's side progressed to the Manchester Premier Cup quarterfinal on Tuesday night with a 2-1 victory at Glossop. And in the MPL West, Mosley were held to a goal of straw by Clitheroe at Seal Park. But the Lily Whites have also progressed to the Manchester Premier Cup quarterfinal, beating Earlham 2-1 on Tuesday. Well, Katie, you have your own column every week in the Tameside Reporter and Glossop Chronicle. It's called Women in Sport. And this week, you've got someone called Stephanie Owens, who's taken part in the Manchester Marathon. Tell us a bit about that. Yeah, so Stephanie ran with East Chesh when she was younger and took up running just because she left the army and was quite unfit and needed a way to get back into running. So she found a charity called the Believe and Achieve Trust and realised how incredible their journey is and their story. So she decided to do the Manchester Marathon in support of those. And she did, she did brilliantly, really. She completed the marathon um, after not sure if she'd be able to do it or not. She did it on her own, which is fantastic. And she's now got a very active family with kids who also run and take part in sports it's brilliant really yeah great stuff a marathon i mean you've just completed the manchester half next year are you gonna push it a little bit go for that marathon maybe not next year but i think at some point i will do a full but the half did it was so hard it did take me out completely i mean it, it is a, it's a long way to run that i mean people who do marathons it's such a credit to them because even doing 10 k's and half are incredibly hard so to do a marathon is fantastic really yeah definitely i mean you've continued your training with east cheshire harriers um you've got any competitions lined up no well I mean we're in cross country season at the minute so we're currently uh, getting ready for the cross country races for the next few weeks up until January February time right. so they're quite often now um, Manchester League and South East Lanks League so it's quite a lot going on but I think the main races for me will be the Tour of Same side again next year doing all four so we'll see how that goes yeah, good luck with the hell and smell <laughs> well in 65 days time families, friends and loved ones will gather to celebrate Christmas Day however for many people the lead up to Christmas can be an anxious period due to the financial costs of the festive season with the COVID-19 pandemic putting further strain on families across the borough, Drawers and Amateur Boxing Club coach Ian Harrison has decided to launch a food and toy appeal to help those in need. 
The appeal was launched last week and has already had a great response. I spoke to Ian about the initiative and the latest development at the club. Well, I do like a kind of a food bank with Tesco's and Greg's. Uh, and I just thought to help people through this bit of the time that we've been having, a yeah. bit of a struggle. Uh, last year, I don't think many kids got many presents because I forgot it already last year what happened. I don't think anything really happened. So I just thought we've done it before, a food and toy appeal. Uh, and I just felt we needed to do something again. Yeah, and you mentioned it then. It's been a really difficult 18 months for everyone, and especially coming up to Christmas, people will be feeling the toll and feeling the pinch in the pocket, so yeah. it couldn't come uh, a better year, could it, really? No, not really. And also with this, um, you know, the credit, the £20 less that people have got, mm. it is a big a big miss for a lot of families. Yeah. So with the run-up to Christmas, if there's uh, something that we can do, you know, something that we can help. We're a community club at the end of the day, yeah. so we're out there to help the community. Yeah, up to now, I've had a great response off uh, the walking footballers and uh, uh, people in the in the area. Because what I'm all, all I'm asking is uh, a stocking filler. So it could be a pound. Go to the pound shop, get a, a pound full of crayons, a box yeah. of crayons for a pound, colouring books a pound, and it's you know, zoom out up, zoom out. Up. Yeah, you've got loads of uh, food as well. Just tinned food, non-perishable stuff that comes in very handy, doesn't it? Especially yeah. during winter. Yeah, tin tins of soup and pasta, which is easy to make. Uh, um, anything like that, non-perishables. Yeah, no bread and the toys. Really, what I'm looking for is new toys rather than second hand because it's the wrapping up of them and yeah. and stuff like that brilliant stuff uh you've been very busy recently uh raising money for macmillan cancer research uk so tell us a bit about that uh, marathon walk you did that must have been quite a challenge it was really hard i mean it was 26 miles they did a couple of training walks but nothing to uh nothing was on the par of, of the 26 miles through uh the peak district i mean the, the day was lovely the scenery was great which got me through it uh, very very well run um, which was great and the coffee morning went brilliant we raised £300 just from a coffee morning yeah. to help out the cause yeah I mean you did that walk for someone who sadly passed away and I think someone who's currently undergoing treatment for cancer yeah. so it must have been quite sentimental for yourself yeah I mean we did it for um, Colin Haywood who, who passed away with cancer uh, a couple of months ago uh, he was one of the founder members of the walking football and for Craig Williams who at the moment is going through uh, chemo and, and cancer treatment. Now looking at stuff inside the ring, Kane Gardner got a fight coming up on the 6th of November, ultimate boxer event and that's something he'll be relishing. Well this is something that we've been hoping and praying one day an opportunity like this will come, come along. He was in training for uh, 10 weeks because he had a central area fight in Liverpool against Nathan Bennett the second time it's been rescheduled Nathan unfortunately got a Covid was out, out of the gym for three or four weeks so that was going to be rescheduled and then his manager Steve Wood uh, said Ian he said I'm going to put him forward for this uh, Sky Boxer tournament eight boxers um, four quarterfinals two semi-finals one final yeah. and big prize money he, he was in training for 10 weeks yeah. And the money for the Central Air fight was okay, but the money for this uh, ultimate fight is um, it's forty thousand for the winner, which just make his yeah, day. Yeah. It'd be brilliant, and I'll get my subs back as yeah. well, so <laughs> that'll be all right. There we go. And I know you've got another prospect uh, just turned professional. Tell us a bit about John. Yeah, John Kiley is another another one of my old young boys. He's been with me since he's been about twelve or thirteen. With the pandemic, we had a bit of a road that was going to go through in the amateurs so we just decided to turn over he had one on the 11th of september won that four rounder and he's got another one uh, on the 27th of november in bolton so that was draws and amateur boxing clubs ian harrison talking about the toy and food appeal so katie it's great to see uh, a local club really getting involved in a local community and helping people in need because the past 18 months been awful for everyone yeah i mean a lot of people have lost jobs and so much funds throughout the past 18 months so to have this little backup you know so they can rely on something rather than struggling throughout christmas is lovely because i think people don't want to be struggling at christmas and you know often to not give as much as they can do so to be able to have that to fall back on is fantastic really and I suppose Droylston or Tameside it's quite poverty stricken in some areas so like I said then for a community club to get out to help people 
especially when they're feeling a the pinch at the moment, it can only be a good thing and hopefully other clubs can uh, follow suit. Yeah, I mean, a lot of children will get nothing at Christmas, so to have this, you know, to support the community and let them know they're not on their own and things can get better, it's fantastic. And a lot of clubs do follow suit as we get closer to Christmas. I know Astley do quite, do quite a lot of stuff, um, yeah. Astley Gym. Most Christmas we do lots of toy appeals and things. So, yeah, it's great to, you know, support people in the local area. I mean, Curzon Ashton a few years ago, they opened the club on Christmas Day uh, for the homeless, gave them uh, free meals, played games and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, it's a good thing. Yeah, and it's a time when everyone comes together, I think, as well. I think Ashton Cricket Club quite do quite a lot of things as well for Christmas and, you know, just to bring everyone together in a time when people are supposed to be together and enjoying time. So it's, it's lovely, yeah. Well, I'm afraid that's all we've got time for for this week's Sports Talk. However, you can find more local sports news on our website, questmedianetwork.co.uk.